Hello there, welcome to another state final training video. We come to you live from quarantine among the coronavirus. So hopefully everyone's safe. No one has it too badly. You don't know anyone that has it too badly. So hopefully you're all practicing the good CDC approved measures. So while you're in quarantine, maybe you can take a break and watch some of these videos. So this is going to be the double A final. Overall pretty good. Uh, just, as always just some stuff to look at. Again, you know, we can nitpick every single final and find something. Alright, so we had this issue throughout the playoffs and I suspect even throughout the regular season of you know, no man's land on some of these backs particularly, are they on the line or are they off? So, if, and also, a thing to remember about these, other than the rule of, you know, you have to be on or off, I mean, the rule does specify one person can be in no man's land, but we always designate that as a quarterback, usually, under center. If someone's going to be on the line, remember, their shoulders have to be parallel to the line of scrimmage, right? So this, number six, if we're going to consider him on the line, then he's illegal because his shoulders are not parallel to the line of scrimmage. This guy's clearly off. We're good there. This guy, though, you know, even him, you know, it's, these are, these are very close. These are not the intention of the rule to line up in this formation. This is, you know, these guys got to be, we got to be on or off. We got to be clearly on or clearly off. We got to have some kind of clarification on this among the officials. You guys have to clarify to the coaches this is what's legal, this was illegal. So, and we're going to hit these hard in the camps this summer. So, um, don't feel like we're just throwing you out to the wolves here. There's another one again. This guy, he's, um, he's close. You know, this is the old. I guess there's a link T, possibly. I'm not good on my formations. But he's got to be clearly on or clearly off. If we're going to call him on, then his shoulder's got to be parallel. If he's going to call him off, he's got to back up a little bit. Um, and, you know, I mean, obviously it's, it, it's not a, it's not technically a foul unless he unless he's covered up and he goes out for a pass. But regardless of whether it's foul or not, we got to clean it up early. This one, again, number six. You know, he he's not clear line or clear off. This guy, he's clearly off. He's good. But he's in no man's land. If he's on, that shoulder's got to be parallel. Uh, so, you know, and that shoulder, I mean, this, he's breaking Lyman's rear ends there. It was a little bit better. We'll give you that one on number one, but... It'll be a little more separation. Ideally, he'd be about right there. So, this player, is he on or is he off? We have some clarification here. He's got to be clearly on or clearly off. Same thing here. And we can go on and on. I'm just throwing you out some here. So, that's, we have to clean that up in 2020 season. Um, there will be more clarification from trainers throughout the summer to your association contacts, what we want. But it's got to be cleaned up. We got started early. You know, trying to clean this up in the finals is too late. Trying to clean up in the playoffs is too late. It has to start preseason. All right. So we'll move on. All right, there's some discussion on this play of whether or not this should be an eligible downfield. An eligible downfield, we had a lot of them this year because of you know, the popularity of the RPO. So for an eligible downfield, remember, it's where the lineman is when the ball is released by the quarterback. So we're going to say the 24-yard line is our line of scrimmage. So they get three yards. So he can go He can go to the 27. It's going to be our line of demarcation. 
So when this ball is passed, when when it is released from the quarterback's hand, um, this is a player in question. He is not three yards downfield. Maybe three yards downfield when the ball is caught or attempted to be caught, but he's not three yards downfield when the ball is released from the quarterback's hand. And that's what we're going for. So we're good there. And then these guys, that's a good stagger. So he's off. So no issue there. Um, so is that is that pulling lineman right there? And he's fine. Um, it's, we give him three yards. And it's where they are when the ball leaves the quarterback's hands. This is another one, and you're going to see some of these that are legal formations. I just didn't put them in the previous, uh, in that first little clip, because we have had so many. And there were other things in these plays I wanted to look at. But number six, that's illegal. We have a block below the waist here on the defender, by the defender. So he clearly takes it out, and that's a dangerous play. He gets him right there on the side of the knee. Uh, luckily that players wouldn't hurt too bad or at all but that's that is the that that would be the what is the field judges call wherever that deep wing is there you know you got those you got those outside blockers coming out there so that's the deep wings key there he's got to be looking at that looking for that hopefully we're not ball watching there and we see that but that's you know Deep wing's got to call that. So it's clearly a block below the waist. Uh, here's another one. This one we got. Uh, ideally, you want to see the wing official call that. I don't know why we're not. Maybe we're focusing on the ball carrier, which would be fine. Uh, luckily, the referee got that. Uh, I would say, referee, uh, when you're throwing into crowd of players there. They're trying not to throw into a, to a crowd of players. Uh, just we just all that's important right there is the yard line. So maybe throw it kind of over here, but on the yard line. Those are a crowd of players. You know, you, you hit a kid in the eye, and only have a host of problems there. So try to throw away from a crowd of players. But a good call for a uh, block below the waist on the defense. Um, we got one more. Hold on. Sorry, my notes are jumbled up. 32 defense. Oh, they got number six. Now, that one's just right at the waist. That one's a little iffy. Uh, and it, and although you've already had two previous block below the waist, if we had called those, I'd probably go ahead and call that one too. Because obviously at that point it's an issue. In a vacuum, you know, this is, it seems to be right the waist. Maybe maybe let that one go. We really want to talk to that defender, and maybe even talk to the, the defensive coordinator there, telling those guys they got to come in above the waist. All right, we gotta have all eleven players set when we snap the ball. See, so we still got players moving. It'll be set for a second. So on the right side of your screen, these players are still moving. I see that illegal wing back. So we have all three players set by the time we had snapped. Here's another one. Again, the wing back. Got to be set for a second. It's a live ball foul. Here we go again. That quarterback, he's going to do that. He's got to stop moving by the time. That ball is snapped. Is he still moving forward? Ball snap. That's a flag as well. We may have gotten this one. That's a lot ball foul. Go watch out for trickery like that. Especially if they're trying to deceive. Uh, it's got to be perfect. Alright, moving on. Watch the umpire here. On an obvious touchdown run like that, there's no need for the umpire to give the signal. Uh, that's only if there's a question. We want you to give subtly give a signal like that. When it's obvious, he runs in the end zone. 
just uh, no signal. Let your let your wings handle it. Unless you see that they obviously don't know. Which hopefully they would. Something obvious like that. So, but in most cases, we're just going to neglect the signal there. Should have at least defensive holding on this one. Uh, you know, I mean, once he comes out like that, once it's obvious this is going to be a throw or attempted a throw, then all bets are off on that. You know, he can't just come and hold it. At least a holding, strong consideration for defensive pass interference. Uh, just, uh, let's, yeah, th that'd be defensive pass interference. I just also want to make sure he's eligible uh, if he's going downfield at that, too. But definitely that's going to be pass interference. So we call this a false start, and that is correct. That wing back right uh, on the right-hand side. Yeah, just go ahead and kill this play. Uh, false start, kill it, and we'll move on. So this one we have a little confusion on the spot. A uh, play like this, this is a headline judge a spot. Then he's going to come in, and then he's a little hesitation. You know, maybe the line judge has something different than the line judge adjusted. But uh, headline judge, that's your spot. You own it, you take it. We look unsure when we do something like that. So really make sure that we're coming in with a spot. We're, we're holding on to that spot and it's ours. Is this a blind side block? So remember our, remember our criteria for a blind side block. Uh, the defender can't see it coming. Forceful contact. And no open hands. So we don't have any open hands. This is forceful contact. So the question is does the defender see it coming? And it's got to be more than just the defender briefly making eye contact with it. Uh, the defender has to be able to put himself in a position where he can protect himself, kind of shield himself from the block. I don't think he has that here. Um, I mean, I think he briefly sees it, but I don't think he has really a chance to really kind of defend himself. So this should be a blindside block, a legal blindside block. Remember, anytime there's question, we want to err on the side of caution. We're gonna have another one right there here on the screen. That would be a blind side block as well. Especially after the play, you know, I mean, behind the play, I mean, there's well, that was close enough to the play. Either way, that's a blind side block as well. That one should have come back. But it's tough. You're gonna miss. You're gonna miss stuff like that eventually. We just oh, every once in a while. But we gotta be vigilant out there. Try to make sure we stay on our toes. It's a good goal line mechanics here. But this is a fumble. There should be a bean bag on the ground. Um. I did not put the GPV, GPV version on here, which clearly shows this is a fumble, which is my fault. But it is a fumble. So if it, and but if this ball comes out of his hands before he steps foot out of bounds, which it pretty it does, it's out right there, and he's not out. And the GPV feed shows it a lot better. Um, but at least have a bean bag on the ground there. All right, and then we have to think about. If you if we're going to rule it a fumble, then all this stuff comes into play. Does it does it go into the is it fumbled into the end zone? Uh, is it his force that fumbles it? See, it looks like he's kind of reaching out here. 
you know, then maybe it was touched by a bee. A lot of stuff to consider, but at least if we're going to rule fumble, first thing we got to do is have a bean bag on the ground so everyone knows we got a fumble. If we just have him out of bounds, and we'll come in and just mark the spot like we did here. But just, you know, it's, that was a weird play. Tough one. No need to beanbag a muff snap. Um, because there's, there's, you know, and we beanbag in case we need to come back to that spot for a penalty. Muff snap, we're not going to. So, no need to beanbag a muff snap. Good goal line mechanics here, but headline judge, once you are at the goal line, and these mechanics, you stay at the goal line. Don't come back. Just stay at the goal line. Because you never know when they're going to come, if they pop through and cross the goal line. So once you come to that, once you crash that goal line, stay at that goal line. Umpire has a good call for defensive holding here. Don't see it very often, but it's very clearly defensive holding. Uh, can't just dive their legs, wrap up, and take them down like that. That's it's not fair. That's why it's against the rules. So good call there. Good job calling something we don't see very often. Here's another one where, again, I didn't put in the GPV feed. Uh, if you go back and watch it, it's pretty clear that the runner is down before he fumbles. So remember in high school, our philosophy is uh, when in doubt, runner's down. And we, we, we have that philosophy because no cheap turnovers. We don't, we don't have replay to bail us out. Everyone does a good job here, except field judge. Back off the field just a little bit more, and you don't have to hop back like that. Um, remember we talked about in camps, you have a good distance off the pylon. Uh, you really never be too far off of it. A good job, both the, the back judge and the field judge, at being there and waiting on the play to come to you. Just back off that field a wee bit more, and uh, you don't have to hop back. All right, last one. Remember for uh, illegal forward pass, really want the quarterback's whole body to be behind or beyond the line of scrimmage. So line of scrimmage right here is a 45. When this ball is released, he's behind it. He's got both feet behind it. You know, so this is this is not a correct call for illegal forward pass. Uh, you know, we want both those feet, really his whole body, beyond the line of scrimmage. And here, being the 50, you know, he's he's good there. But it happens. It's tough. It all happens quickly. All right, good job, crew. Uh, another well-called state final game. Please be safe out there. Obey the CDC rules. And we will see you for the 3A final.